Well, it's what everybody's talking about. This uh, transfer story as now it moves into phase two is where the kids are actually going to start showing up at the schools. From the St. Louis Post-Dispatch Bureau, she's been following this from the beginning. Elisa Crouch, thanks for joining us here on the Big 550 KTRS. Thanks for having me. Uh, you got some uh, breaking news uh, this morning, uh, some, some new numbers? Well, yeah, it looks like the cost estimates for the transfers has gone up to about $35 million. And so that, that's about $5 million more than uh, we had thought it would be last week. $35 million, and that includes the tuition money as well as transportation. Right, right. It includes both. Do we have any idea of the breakout of how much for the transportation and how much for the tuition? Well, the estimate is based on an average tuition cost of $12,000. So at this point, we're not really sure, um, you know, taking a look at where students are enrolled, the actual tuition costs. And the, uh, the, the transportation costs are based on a $3,000 uh, per student estimate. So, and that number is how much it costs to um, transfer kids who are on the in the busing program from the city to the um, you know the DSAC busing um, program to county schools. So that's how much it costs to transport them. So that's what they're basing that estimate on. Gotcha. All right, that's thirty-five million. What about the number of students? Because now they've extended the deadline. We understand from your stories this morning. Right. They've extended the deadline until noon today. That's only for students who were told they can't get into Kirkwood or Melville, the two transportation districts. And so that, that will probably only apply to about 200 kids. Um, as of right now, it looks like 2,640 are, transfer, are uh, transferring. So 2,640, that, that looks to be the number of kids who are getting out of the failed school districts. That's correct. Uh, That's about 75% of kids who are enrolled in both districts. Interesting. Um, are we seeing more high school kids, more junior high kids, or more um, or, or more elementary school kids? You know, at this point, um, that's a good question. It's, it's pretty... We do notice a significant, you know, a spike for kids who are entering either elementary school or high school or middle school. So the numbers for kindergarten are fairly high. The numbers for ninth grade are fairly high. You don't see a lot of twelfth graders who are transferring, right? Certainly understandable. They're their senior year. They want to do it with all their their friends at the school they're they're used to. Right. Uh, Elisa Crouch with us from the St. Louis Post Dispatch Bureau talking about the transfer story. Um, what happens? I know we've got a couple of questions here about this. What happens if the Normandy School or the Riverview School? Uh, numbers shoot up this year and they get uh, reaccredited. Do all of these kids then have to go back to their home school? Yeah, it's unlikely they would. I mean, technically they could, but it's very unlikely that the, so the state is advising these, the receiving districts to keep the kids through it, through the whole school year. Um, it, it would not be illegal for a school to say, you know, your district is accredited, so you have to go back. But it's being advised to keep them there for the whole school year, and it's also very unlikely that either district will receive a reaccreditation this this school year. Certainly so, understandable. But but what about next year? Next what happens year, next year? Off. All bets are off. If they if either receive accreditation or if the legislature steps in and changes the law, if there's some sort of you know legal change to this whole thing, then um, so they could be well, bounced out next oh, yeah. year and yeah. go back to their right. home district. Uh, right. you, you've had a chance to talk to some of the parents, and some of the parents have had a chance to sort of look at some of the schools. What have you seen there? In terms of what parents are weighing as their options? Oh, no, no, as, as what parents and families are saying and kids are saying about some of the, the school districts they're going to. You've had a chance to talk to some yeah, of the parents, haven't you? They're, they're, they're thrilled. They're excited. I mean, this is, for, for a lot of these parents and these kids, this is a golden opportunity. A lot of parents have felt stuck living where they're living now because in North County, um, parents who have bought homes there, the property values have declined to the point they can't leave. Some of them have jobs that just don't really financially allow for them to move into districts like Kirkwood or Clayton or Ladue or Webster Groves. And so for them, this is just this amazing moment that they've waited for for a long time. Uh, what about the receiving school districts? So I know it was somewhat contentious, but have the teachers or the kids in those school districts spoke at all about any of this? It seems like the districts have really stepped up. You know, they're holding registration right now for, for, the, for, for everyone, for all new students. 
And it just, it, from, from what we've seen, it seems like the, the, the teachers and the principals and the students are doing their very best to make these kids feel welcome. There also, I think it was your story, I think over the weekend or today, I, I can't remember which it was, one of the schools is actually having a buddy system with, with current students. Right, that was in Francis Howell. One of the, one of the middle schools is doing that. Um, so that's kind of nice to sort of at least, you know, better than a 1956 photo of the kids getting off the bus and everyone staring at them like they're Martians to right. sort of buddy them up with somebody who's already there and give them a, give them a couple days of, of, you know, where the, where the classrooms are and the cafeteria and everything else. Yeah. It sure makes it look like the first day of school go much smoother than we had feared about four weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, when, when does school start and, and what happens between now and then? Well, the first day of school for any of the districts will be Francis Howell on this Thursday, and the rest of the districts will follow. I think August 19th might be the first day of school for St. Louis Public, Um, so that will be, you know, that's on the later end. Do we know how many students got their first choice? You know, that's a good question. At this point, I'm not sure. All right. Um, do we know how many pe- because there were some who either wanted their first choice or nothing at all. So we don't even know those. I mean, all, all those numbers are sto- are all still fluid, correct? Right. That, all those numbers are still fluid. I think after the noon deadline today, we should probably have some better idea from cooperating school districts. And by the way, the people at cooperating school districts have been working around the clock on this. Some of them didn't sleep on Thursday night going into Friday. Yeah. Uh, any word from the governor's office, from any uh, elected officials, anybody say anything as this process moves on? Nothing from the governor's office that I've heard. Um, the, the state education commissioner, Chris Castro, held a press conference on Friday just talking about you know, a range of issues, including the financial implications of this. And she said that she will go to the legislature to ask for funding when and if um, either of these two districts two districts become insolvent, because of the thirty five million dollars they're going to lose, right? Yeah. Right. And yeah. Right. So the kids that are left behind have thirty five million dollars less, and so the, those two school districts will not be able to survive with that hole in their budget. And certainly, for sure, Normandy this school year they have that school district is um, you know it's not in horrible financial shape, but it's not it, it's it, you know they have about eight million dollars in savings, and they're going to be spending through that pretty quickly. And so, all indications are by spring they'll need they'll need someone to help them out, or I don't know how they're going to run their schools. Alisa Crouch is with us from the St. Louis Post Dispatch Bureau, stltoday.com. Your work on this has been fantastic, and the entire region is uh, following along. So, uh, Alisa, we, we thank you for joining us today. Now, now get back to work. All right. Thanks for having me. You Bye-bye. got Alisa Crouch with us from the St. Louis Post Dispatch Bureau. New numbers, some breaking news this morning. She's reporting $35 million is the new estimate to. Uh, transfer 2,640 kids out of the failing school districts into school districts around the St. Louis metropolitan area.